In this video, we're going to go through 10 math properties that you're going to want to know. So let's go through the properties, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go through 20 examples together. We'll do 10 together, and then the other 10 maybe you can practice on your own, and then we'll go through those ones together as well. So let's go through the properties. These are super important to know the names. So additive identity. And the other key is when you look closely at the name, it sort of tells you what it is. What I mean by that is, if say if you have the additive identity, identity means that you get the identical quantity back. So when I add zero to any number, let's say A is a number here, A plus zero is equal to itself, A. So we call that the additive identity. The multiplicative identity, whenever you multiply by the number one, you get the identical quantity back. So like a times one is equal to a. So just remember when you see the word identity, think I'm getting the identical quantity back. Now the multiplication property of zero, we know that whenever you multiply a number or a quantity by zero, you get zero. So that's called the multiplication property of zero. The additive inverse is when you take a number plus its opposite sign, you're gonna get zero. For example, three plus negative three is zero or negative three plus positive three is zero. So that's called the additive inverse. When you add its inverse, you get zero. Multiplicative inverse, when you multiply a number times its reciprocal, you always get one. So if you multiply two times a half, you're gonna get one, or three times a third, you're gonna get one. When you multiply by the multiplicative inverse, you get one. Associative property of addition. Now, associative, it's kind of like when you're at school, like who do you associate with? Who's your group of friends, right? Notice A, B, and C are in the same order, but what we're doing is we're grouping or associating or putting these first two quantities in parentheses, whereas here we're putting the last two quantities in parentheses. You'll still get the same answer whether you add these two first or these two first, but this is just a way of grouping, and that's called the associative property of addition. There's also an associative property of multiplication. Again, notice that these quantities are in the same order, A, B, C, A, B, C. It's just that here we're grouping or associating the first two, here we're grouping or associating the last two. It doesn't matter which ones you multiply first, you're gonna get the same result in the end. And then for the commutative property of addition, when you think of commuting, like if somebody commutes to work, that means like they, they drive or they bicycle or they walk to work. They're basically moving uh, to a different location. And similarly with the commutative property of addition, we're moving or changing the order. Uh, a plus B is the same as B plus A. Like two plus three is the same as three plus two. You can change the order in addition. When you add, you're gonna get the same result. And it's the same thing for multiplication. There's a commutative property of multiplication. If you change the order, you're gonna get the same result. Five times two is equal to two times five. And then lastly, the one that you're gonna to wanna to know is this distributive property. And what this is, is whatever's on the outside of the parentheses here, when it's right next to that parentheses, it means uh, multiplication. And so what you do is you multiply that quantity on the outside of the parentheses into the parentheses. So we have a times x plus a times y. So you're just distributing or multiplying into the parentheses. So let's practice now. See if you can get some of these. What do you think for this first one? Five times one equals five. Well, I can see that I started with five. I'm ending with five. So this is definitely an identity and we're multiplying. So I would say this is the multiplicative identity. Okay, for number two, we have two times the quantity in parentheses, three X minus four is equal to six X minus eight. What property is that? Well, you can see what I did here is I multiplied that two into the parentheses. That's called the distributive property. That's the last one we went over here. For number three, we have seven plus negative seven equals zero. Now this is like seven plus the opposite sign of seven, which is negative seven equals zero. That's called the additive inverse. That's this one right here. And for number four, we've got three plus four plus two equals three plus four plus two. Here it's telling us to add what's in parentheses uh, three plus four first, that's seven, plus two is nine. Here it's saying add these last two numbers together first, that's four plus two, six plus three is nine. We're getting the same answer, but what do we do? We, we grouped a different set of numbers. This is the associative property of addition. Okay, number five, we have 10 times one tenth. So 10 times its reciprocal is equal to one. That's called our multiplicative inverse. Uh, number six, we have eight plus zero equals eight. Which one is that? Well, you can see again, we're getting the identical quantity back, eight, eight 
right? So this is called the additive identity. Whenever you add zero to a number, you get itself. And for number seven, we've got x times y times z, x times y times z. Notice the order is the same, but the grouping is different. Here we're grouping the first two, here we're grouping the last two. That's called the associative property of multiplication. Remember, there's one for addition, there's one for multiplication. And for number eight, we have five times two equals two times five. That's 10, that's 10, right? So we, it's true that they're equal, but what do we do? We change the order, so that's called commuting or a commutative property of multiplication. Number nine, three times zero equals zero. We know whenever we multiply anything by zero, we get zero, and that's called the multiplication property of zero. That's this one right here. And number 10, eight plus nine plus 10 equals eight plus 10 plus nine. What happened here? Well, it looks like there was a change in order. Nine and 10 became 10 plus nine. You're gonna get the same answer, but we change the order. That's called commuting. In this case, it's the commutative property of addition. Let's look at 10 more examples. See if you can do these next 10 on your own. Okay, pause the video, and you might wanna take a screenshot of these problems right here. I'll try to stand out of the way so you can uh, test yourself. So take a screenshot of that and see if you can do these problems. And while you do that, I just wanted to let you know, if you like the way that I explain things and you wanna learn more about Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 slash College Algebra, check out my video courses. I'll put a link in the description below. It's where I take you through a typical curriculum with explanations of the concepts, practice problems, problems that you can do on your own as well. And uh, it's a great resource. I put a lot of time and energy into it. And I think you'll benefit by those uh, video courses. So check those out. But let's go through these problems together now. So number 11, we've got six plus zero is equal to six. Which property is that? Well, what I notice is I started with six, I ended with six. That tells me this is an identity. And I know whenever I add zero to something, I get the identical thing back. That's this first one right here, additive identity. Number 12, what'd you get for this one? Well, here you can see we multiplied that five into the parentheses, five X minus five, and that's the distributive property. For number 13, what's happening here? We have five times four times two, five times four times two. Notice they're in the same order, but the grouping has changed. The parentheses has changed. This is what we call the associative property of multiplication, because you can see we're multiplying. For number 14, what did you get for this one? E times F is equal to F times E. Well, you can see we changed the order. That's called commuting or the commutative property of multiplication. Number 15, we have 23 times zero equals zero. What'd you get for that one? Well, remember anything times zero is always equal to zero. That's called the multiplication property of zero. Uh, number 16, seven times one seventh equals one. What did you get for that one? Well, we know when you multiply a number times it's reciprocal, you're always gonna get one. That's called our multiplicative inverse. And for 17, we have one times four equals four. Notice we started with four, we ended with four. Of course, anything times one is itself. We're getting an identical quantity, so we're thinking the multiplicative identity, this one here. Uh, number 18, negative 12 plus positive 12 equals zero. So a number plus it's the same number but the opposite sign is gonna give you zero. It's like they undo one another and that is called the additive inverse. And for number 19, we have three plus four plus five equals four plus three plus five. Notice we change the order with the three and the four. So that's called commuting or the commutative property. And in this case, it's the commutative property of addition since we're adding. And then the last example here, we have 10 plus 11 plus 12, 10 plus 11 plus 12. Notice they're in the same order but the grouping is different, right? So the parentheses around the last two numbers here, parentheses around the first two numbers, still gonna get the same answer, but this is the associative property of addition. So great job if you're able to work with these properties. So practice memorizing the names. And if you like the way that I explain things, I've got many more videos like this on my Mars Math Tutor and YouTube channel where I try to distill down these concepts and make them easier to understand for you. So check those videos out. I'll see you in my next video.